Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Pasadena. Whether you're present with us in person or whether you are joining us via live stream, we are delighted to have you here today. I especially want to take this opportunity to welcome my good friend and former, but now retired, uh, Port Chaplain Reverend David Wells to our pulpit while Dr. Fair takes a couple of days of well-deserved rest. She will be back in the middle of the week. Before we go further, I'd like to encourage you to take the Black Friendship folders and to indicate your presence here. If you're new to us or just visiting, please give us some contact information such that we can get in touch with you uh, and follow up and share a little bit of what First Presbyterian is all about. Also, I want to remind all of you to include any who are visiting that this is our first Sunday lunch. Potluck lunch, folks, and church potlucks are always good, and there's always plenty of food, so plan on coming. Don't worry about not having brought anything, because there'll be food there. Another announcement, uh, another item before the announcement is that if you have any prayer request cards, an usher will be coming around uh, during the first hymn to pick them up and pass them on to David. We'd like to thank both Susan Barris Barcelo and Margaret Doris Barden for the lovely flowers right here in front of us. They are in honor of Charles A. Doris, their father, and our thanks to both of you ladies. On Monday the 15th and again on Monday the 22nd at 10 a.m., Dr. Fair will be leading a special two-part video series on Judaism through a video prepared by the Austin Seminary. It's a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about one of the earliest religions and one that has been foundational to our Presbyterian, or our Christianity, rather. All of you ladies interested in being a member of the Presbyterian women are already in there. There's information regarding their next meetings. Uh, and the crosses on the corner are down for the year. I've heard both year for the year and maybe permanently, don't know. If you have one and if you're interested in taking it home, they are stored in the maintenance shed out there. Linda, is, are they down for good or just for a year? Okay. This year down definitely, next year maybe not is what she just said for those that couldn't hear. Ruth Askin, our in-house tour guide extraordinaire, has organized a trip to Round Top for uh, coming up this Friday. So if you're interested in going up there, see Ruth during lunch and uh, see what you can do about getting involved. And uh, if there are those of you who missed the clack of dominoes, well, your opportunity is coming up to plan on attending the Young Heart Gathering on the 18th at 10 in the morning for a devotional sandwich that's being provided and some serious fun and fellowship with cutthroat chicken foot and hand and foot. <laughs> now then, could we all rise and share passing of the peace with each other? May the peace of Christ be with you.
It is a joy and a privilege to come together today to worship God. Let us all now stand as we are able and join together in the call to worship. How good it is for us to come together as kindred spirits. Hallelujah. Our doubts are answered and we feel the presence of Christ. The risen Christ, Christ speaks to us and gives us peace. Hallelujah. seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence in faith and penitence. Let us now confess our sins before God and one another using the prayer of confession printed in our bulletin. Risen Lord, we confess our silence amid the persecution of others, silence that has often complied with oppression and brought harm. What can we do to eradicate poverty, hunger, and homelessness? Help us to hear your voice above all others and teach us how to care for our neighbor, feed the hungry, and clothe and care for those in need. For as we do these things unto one another, we do them also unto you. Amen. God calls each of us by name. Every community of faith is known to God whose understanding is unlimited. The one who knows our heart is eager to forgive the true, uh, truly penitent and to empower those who have grown weary. Your strength is being renewed in these moments. You will mount up with wings like eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Friends, 
believe and live the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Sela. We come to you now, Lord, with our hearts and minds open to hear your word, to receive your guidance and teaching, and to receive your blessing. Guide us now that we might hear and understand what it is that you are teaching us through your words from both the Old and New Testaments and the lesson being brought to us. This we ask in your name. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Psalm 133. It is a song of ascents. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. The word of the Lord.
Thank you, Marilyn and the choir. You all add so much to every worship service. It is truly a blessing to have all of you perform for us. Thank you. Our New Testament reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had any need. The word of the Lord. Well, good morning. It is always good to be with you all. And you're still asking for me, what am I doing wrong? I haven't figured that out. Um, you know, every once in a while, I'm not in a worship service at a church on Sunday, believe it or not. I'm retired. But I like to get on TV or get to the TV to listen to a preacher, many times not of my own denomination, to kind of assess what kind of gospel preaching is happening. And the first Sunday of Lent, I happened to be listening to a big name preacher on the TV, and he was preaching on Matthew 4 chapters 1 to 10, quite appropriate for the beginning of Lent. It was when the Holy Spirit took Jesus to the wilderness. He, Jesus was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and then the Holy Spirit had Satan there to tempt Jesus before he began his ministry. And so he takes Jesus up on the mountain and the devil says to Jesus, if, if you will, you can turn this bread of these stones into bread. Jesus was obviously hungry. Well, so far, so good on the preacher's sermon. Uh, and then, then Jesus answered, man does not live by bread alone. But then the preacher puts in one sentence, just one little sentence, and he says to the effect, Jesus would never support socialism and provide free food. I wanted to jump up out of my chair. Where did Jesus say that? He didn't even say bread's not important or you don't have to worry about bread. He said, man does not live by bread alone. Where do you get some some?" economic system that Jesus is against. Well, I, I wanted to turn off the TV, obviously, but I wonder what that pastor, if he's preaching on the lectionary today, I wonder what he's saying about these verses that we read. What's he going to twist that to mean? They're pretty hard verses, and we'll come back to that later. But I see people who are good Christians, who love to hold up the Bible, quote the Bible, and proclaim what good Christians they are, but they only choose certain verses. 
What about all those verses that make you hurt and, and scream and wonder, gee, do I really want to read this? Do they just never read them? I hope you're not like that. That's why I said maybe I'm not preaching right. You will keep inviting me back. My mother passed away last month. You know, grieving is something everybody does, and everybody does it differently. And I thought I understood all about, the, about grieving. But when it's you, you realize things sometimes come out that you don't expect that the grieving process is really a strange animal. Well, my brother was, we, we were all there when my mother passed. That was good. And we were planning a memorial service while we were all together real quickly do, doing part of it, uh, of the planning. But uh, my brother set up, after we had left, set up by uh, an set up that we would all get together um, after the memorial service at his daughter's house and gather as a family. Well, he was telling my sister this, one of my sisters, and he hadn't told us all about this, but my sister said, well, wouldn't it be better if we all gathered as a family the, the day before? Because some people may need to leave quickly after the memorial service and won't be able to attend. Well, my brother didn't say anything. And so my sister called me and she told me about it. I'm the oldest and told me about it. And, and, and I said, well, you know what? I think you've got a good point. Let me just uh, get in touch with Philip and we'll see, you know. So I text my brother. I text him first and I said, Philip, uh, I wonder if it might be good to do it the day before because, and I gave him all the reasons, and I get this text back and says, don't worry, I'm canceling it. And I texted him back and I said, no, no, no. I wasn't saying we have to do it a different time. I was just asking, it, does it make sense and could we? And then he texts me again and he says, it's canceled. So I said, I've, I've got to call him now. So I called him to try and soften this situation. And he gets on the phone and says, I guess you were talking with Debbie. I said, and I said, yeah, but we were just, and he hangs up on me. Okay. The next day, I'm talking to my other sister about something else. Having a good conversation. And Christy says to me, I can't believe you were so weak. I, I had responsibility for helping to plan how we were going to do the memorial service with the pastor in the church there. And I can't believe you were so weak with the pastor. I said, what do you mean? Well, I can't believe we're having the inurnment before we have the memorial service. Because the pastor had said to me, we now try to do the inurnment first and then have a memorial service. And he gave me the reasons. They made sense to me. I said, I don't think there'll be a problem. Let me check with everybody. And so I went and mentioned it to all my, bro my brother and sisters. Nobody said anything or had an objection. So I went back to him and said, okay, we'll do that. And so when my sister is saying, I can't believe you were so weak with the pastor, and, and I said, Christy, I mentioned it to everybody and nobody said anything. You didn't mention it to me. And so we hung up, and I immediately text my brother and both my sisters, and I said, it has come to my attention that there may be a misunderstanding of some things with the memorial service, and I apologize that I did not communicate clearly with everyone. Immediately, I get a telephone call. Guess who? My brother who hung up on me. 
And he said, David, which one of the sisters said that? You didn't do anything wrong. You did everything right. What, what is going on here? And, and I, I said, Philip, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who said it. It's okay. I apologized. It's okay. Misunderstandings happen. It's okay. We all make mistakes. And it's good to be able to apologize. You know, Philip, you've made some mistakes. And you can always apologize. I had to get that in. Of course, he just went right by it. And I thought, huh. See, you see, grieving is a funny animal. And everybody expresses it, the stress, in different ways. Well, isn't the world, much of the world is like my brother. He's never wrong. He's always right. He will always argue for what he thinks. Do you know people like that? Are you sometimes like that? I hope not, but you may be. I may be. And sometimes, no, oh, never, Jim. Jim, you're never that way. But no, seriously, <laughs> Bonnie's raising her head. But, 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 you know, apologizing and being wrong, not being right all the time. We should know better. Well, in John 12, 24 to 25, before Jesus went to the cross, he said this, we must die in order to live. He says, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. There are things that we must let go of and hate about our life or, or the worldly life. There are things that we must die to in this life and not hold on to everything. I'm right. You're wrong. Only what I think. Only the verses I like. Only who I think I should be. And now, what is it? The, which amendment do we fight for now? I have a right for this, for that. Wait a minute. What is this about? Personal rights? Is that what we want to lift up? Is it really? Me, me, me again? And Jesus says, what are some of the things Jesus might say we need to die for in order to live? Well, let me list a few, see what you think. The hardest for me, this is hard, oh gosh, love of money. <laughs> oh, well, that just means loving it too much. You still have to have money. I, I, he doesn't really mean that. He doesn't really mean to the rich young ruler, give away all that you have and follow me. He doesn't really mean that. Love of money. Power and control. Oh, well, I can let go sometimes. Can you let go completely? Selfishness and not caring about other people. Oh, well, I care about other people, my friends, people that come to my house, people. What about your enemies, people you don't like, people that you don't want to be around? What about caring for them? Hate, getting even, lying and cheating. Oh, I never do that. Well, maybe just a little. 
not a, not a big lie, just a little lie. Are we broken? Can we accept that we're broken? Let me tell you about a 15th century Japanese art. And the name of it is Kintsugi. Have you ever heard of it, Kintsugi? Has anyone ever heard about that 15th century Japanese art form, Kintsugi? Nobody? I hadn't either till I discovered it. And if you ever want to look it up, I'll spell it for you out when we go outside. And you can look it up online. Because what it is, is the Japanese in the 15th century discovered broken pottery could be put together. Because kin kintsugi, what it literally means is to join with gold. And it makes a lacquer with real gold. And that lacquer and gold, it cements together all those pieces of pottery. And it shows the broken places in gold. And it values that pottery more than tenfold what it was worth before. God takes us when we accept our brokenness, when we are unworthy, the fullness of God's grace that we learn from the cross is that God will put you back together with gold lacquer that makes you even more valuable as a person than you were before. But will we, to our deathbed, ever get to the point where we'll say, God, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, I'm broken, I give up. Take me in your hands with your grace. Will we dare to do that? Do you do that every day? We should. Except on the money thing. That's the hardest. I don't know about the giving up the money. But what did the early church, after listening to the apostles right after Jesus was re resurrected, what did the early church begin to do? Those socialists? <laughs> I'm joking, okay? They... None of them owned anything privately. They took all that they had, they sold it, they put it together, and nobody had need. My gosh, how extreme is that? Do we dare admit that we don't save ourselves in this life and in this world? Oh my gosh, my investment's better than it's ever been. I don't want to let go of it all. We're finally able to breathe. I've never had money before. Now I do. Do I have to let go of it all? Well, I'm not going to answer that for you or for me. I know where I'm going to be and not going to be. But let's be honest. What Jesus really needs is you are broken. And someday you're going to have to admit it. And someday you'll let go of this life, at least. And someday God is going to put you back together and make you more beautiful than you were before. So you know what I'm trying to do every day is start a little bit at a time to the letting go. That was the title of my first sermon in Little Rock, Arkansas, letting go. And I'm still working on it. <laughs> I'm still working on it, letting go. It has a new meaning, though, now. Letting go and then surrendering completely to God. 
and that will be more than enough. May you also be a broken pot of clay that is put together with gold lacquer in your life. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I got one card, and it I love what it says. It's from Amelda, and it says, Laughter in my house, a prayer of praise. You know what? Laughter is something we all should do more of. And I need to I need to let my brothers and sisters know that by getting them to laugh when these crazy times happen. Anyway, let us come to God with prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray that you will fill us all with laughter and take the laughter that we feel and find to our homes and to the areas of work and to our areas of being with others. Help us to not take ourselves too seriously. Oh God, we pray for those who don't have much choice of being serious, who are under threat of bad health and struggling to survive from that people who are struggling with wars and violence and threats of life. We pray that you will comfort them and help them to feel connected with others who care about them. 
Help us to care about all of those others in the world who suffer in whatever way. Oh God, we pray that you will help others to believe in you and your grace and your love. For that is what Jesus died for, that we would love our neighbor as ourself and that we would love you. Help us to show that way to those that we are around with our laughter and our care. Oh God, be with this your church, a place where people can listen for your word and struggle with your word and find the direction for the real life where our broken life can be put back together. And now, oh God, each of us brings to you personal prayers in a moment of silence. All of this we pray as our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us celebrate with the sharing of our morning offering.
Oh God, may this small gift go to help others and to serve your church so that we might move forward with your ministry. This we pray in the name of our Lord. Amen. Do not fear. Your life is not your own. But you are never alone. Remember that. As Christians, you will never be left alone by true Christians. So go as broken but restored people through gold and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore Amen
this trash. <laughs> <laughs>